With the exciting release of the new Suzuki Jimny, Old Man Emu have put out a new suspension system. We're going to take you for a ride with Fuxi, the lead engineer, tell you all about it. So I'm out here with uh, Stuart Fuchs, who's our lead engineer for Old Man Emu Suspension, and we're carving up around the local hills here in the new Suzuki Jimny. So Fuxi, tell me a little bit about the, uh, the Jimny development. Great opportunity. I mean, we love whenever we can get out onto the road and out onto the dirt, you know, um, away from the paperwork and, and everything else that we have to do in the office. Getting out onto the road is is the best part of our job and doing the tune and all that and, and, and being given the opportunity to jump into the Jimny, it's not it's not a Prado or a Ranger or and not that they're bad things, but that's our day-to-day -day bread and butter. So to get the opportunity to do something a little bit smaller and with a bit of character and a real personality about it was a great opportunity. It certainly is smaller, isn't it, than than what we've been used to developing. Were there any challenges with it being small? Because I would imagine that the tuning and development work for this is not like what you would be doing on a Hilux. Yeah, it's just a matter of recalibration, really. The principles and, and everything that we're doing remains the same and the way we go about it remains the same it's just it's really a matter of recalibrating your brain and getting your head around it the, I mean it's almost like but to the opposite extreme the first time we did you know the f-250 or a super duty you'd need to just recalibrate how that that all happens and get your head around it but then it's back to the same principles and the same philosophy of, of tuning the front and rear springs and, and the front and rear shocks and getting them all to talk together and getting the balance there. So, I mean, it looks like a, it's a fun car to drive. Yeah, awesome, awesome fun. And everybody, you know, that that sees it or drives it has that impression that it, look, it looks fun and it should be fun to drive. And we're really proud with the result that we've come up that that, that is the case. <laughs> you just want to drive faster and <laughs> have fun. It, it, is, it just, I don't know, to me it's still, it's just this primary school aged boy that's just mischievous and wants to have fun you know and uh, I don't know after having FJ40 and a TJ and of the same family and they're all sort of cousins you know you could imagine the Jeep's the US version this is the Japanese version a Defender short Defender would be the British one but they all just want to run off into the bush and get up to some mischief yeah I, I've got to say so you know the, the on-road manners that I'm feeling here like you know being such a small car and being in small cars before, you know, they can be quite pitchy. They can bounce up forward and back and yep. a bit side to side. I mean, the road manners on this thing are unbelievable. You know, you're throwing it into the corners here. It's quite stable. Um, it's not harsh, you know, it's yep. got that really nice feel. What have you done in regards to spring development? I suppose the first step was to have a have a feel of the OE car. How did that go? What were their spring rates? What was what, what were its characteristics? How was it at handling? Yeah, our first step after that was to bolt in the stuff out of the previous chimney. So that all bolts in and works well. Spring rates when compared to OE were up a bit. So that was one of the first areas we looked at really was we backed off the spring rates, see how much comfort and compliance we could get into it, articulation, all those sort of things by dropping spring rate and then creeping up to the increased the spring rate over OE that we had on the previous model Jimny that was done probably well over 15 years ago before my time in OE. So we got the spring rates down, got it moving around, got the comfort and compliance and then worked on pairing a shock tune with that Okay. to maintain the fun. Yeah. So, Fuxi, I did notice the other day when the Suzuki was on the uh, on the hoist, the shocks, they're, they're larger. They look larger in diameter than what we developed on the previous model, Jimny. Can you tell me what's, uh, what's happening there? Yeah, so in the 15 plus years since the last Jimny suspension was developed, we've had some changes and we've had some evolution in the technology we have to develop Nitro Charger. Around 10 years ago, it was that long that we bought out the range of Nitro Charger Sport, which was a, an evolution in, in valving technology. So given the opportunity now on the Jimny, we've employed that, that technology. The shock has a lot more opportunity for refinement of the performance. Um, the Jimny being a lighter, smaller thing, doesn't need as much damping performance as the stuff we're used to you know, the, the mid-size, full-size SUVs and trucks that we're used to. This new Nitro Charger Sport style valving architecture gives us a lot more opportunity for, for fine tuning at these lower damping performances. Um, it's also meant that we've gone from a, a 30 mil ball piston to a 35 mil ball piston and we get, again, just 
extra levels of refinement there. It's also meant the, the outer tube or the reserve tube, the body of the shock's gone from 50 up to 54. And we get more oil in it that way, which is better for, for cooling. It, it's, all, it's all good stuff and it's all going in the right direction. I noticed there was a new bracket on the rear of the car. What, what's that about? So that bracket's a, a panhard bracket and the panhard rod is one of the parts of the, the rear suspension. So when you lift it, 40 mil, it changes some of the dynamics of the car. It puts the panhard rod on a bit more of an angle and then for the vertical movement of the suspension as you're going over bumps, you get lateral movement. So the, the flatter you can get that bar, the less lateral movement you get. And so what does that mean to your eye driving it? That lateral movement is something that you get sort of head toss. You get this movement. So as it's going up and down over bumps in the rear, you're getting lateral sideways movement of the um, of the back the back axle and you get this sort of funny head tossy thing and, and 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 it feels like it's wiggling its bum a little bit so by raising that rear panhard mount the rear roll center an extra complexity in the kit but it's a bolt-on solution and it really does improve the dynamics and behavior of the car and, and, and help it maintain its fun driving character really so uh I also noticed that there were, there were some bump stops, what was required there. So to, so to reposition the lower axle end panhard mount where we wanted it, we had to come up with a bump stop spacer because the panhard bracket and getting that mount where we wanted it was going to run into the chassis at full compression. So to get it up where we wanted it, we've introduced a little bump stop spacer so the bump stop will stop the suspension travel before that panhard rod has any opportunity to contact on the chassis or the body. Was there um, any challenges around wheel alignment after fitting suspension to the Jimny? 40 mils a lot for such a little car. So you lose a bit of caster coming up that 40 mil in the front. So to get caster back down around where OE has it set, we put in a caster kit, a couple of bushes with some offset sleeves to, to just sneak caster back down around um, where OE had it. And what that just gives you a better better feel of the steering wheel as, you, as you're driving it a bit, you know, better return to centre. And again, just brings it back to the fun car it's intended to be. You, you mentioned there about 40 mil lift, so that we've achieved a 40 mil lift. And, you know, from time to time we get asked by people, you know, well, why didn't we do more lift? You know, were there any specific things or challenges based around that, why we didn't go more than 40 mil lift? We always try and get as much as we can. In Australia, it's, it's 50 mil. Pretty much all of the time that's dictated by droop. So droop's the amount of travel that the wheel's gonna have from ride height to full extension. And normally droop's limited by things like brake lines or ABS wires or wall joints or suspension bits and pieces running into each other. And so in this case, it was brake lines that was the limit of basically how much extension we could get into the shock and, and the whole suspension system. After we've set our sort of target droop, position we work out how much we can lift the the car to allow enough droop travel to basically keep the wheels on the road to keep it safe do things like braking steering because you can't brake very well or steer very well if the if the wheel's not on the ground and firmly planted so we, we really keep it safe and that's number one and then chase control and lift and all the benefits that we get out of lift when the Jimny first turned up, we were all a little bit excited about it better turning up. Tell me, can you remember what your first impressions were? Again, it's like, it, it just, it has a personality and a character of its own. And, and that's what I love about it. You love it for what it is. And I reckon it would be, you know, if you're driving it in Japan or you're driving it on some small, you know, smaller roads in Europe and, you know, it probably loves it. And around town and, you know, 60 k's an hour, 50 k's an hour around town, Awesome, great fun. Um, but then you take him onto the freeway and he just, I got the impression of, he got bullied by trucks. You know, you'd, you'd be, a truck had, had, would go past and the wind would blow him around and he'd almost get bullied and, and be a little bit frightened and go into his shell. So that was probably one of the first things for us to address was how do we give him more confidence? How do we give him more control? How do we give the driver, you know, that sense of control and, and, and being more comfortable on the, on the highways and on, on the freeways. That was a target to look at, something that we wanted to explore. You know, corrugations probably wasn't one of its favourite things. The first time we took him on to corrugations, you know, it was sort of like skipping across hot sand. So that was another opportunity for us to, 
you know, to explore it within our spring rates and our valving and our tune. So we've maintained the fun is what I'd say. You know, we've ma maintained the fun of the general round town type of driving and, and we've made some good inroads and some good improvements um, on corrugation and, and on freeway highway speeds and just the level of, of confidence that you get driving in those type of situations. Yeah, the Jimny's got a, a little bit more tech. You wouldn't say it's the highest tech uh, vehicle that we've seen come across our car park, but I did notice that you, you boys were fitting up a little bracket to, to the back, which I think had something to do with the headlights. What's um, What was the go there? Yeah, so that was just another one of the challenges we get with modern cars. So that was a, a bracket that mounts a sensor to aim the headlights with modern headlights so that when we lift it, the headlights move appropriately with the height of the car. There was also, because we, we extend the length of the shock, we give it more travel, we were basically going to overstretch the, that sensor and the linkages. We've come up with a little bracket to, to adjust the position of that sensor and make sure it works at our new ride height. It's not the biggest car inside, so it's you're not going to be carrying huge amounts of uh, of uh, payload in it, but um, I noticed in the spring selection we've got a couple options in the in the front and one in the back. Uh, so just tell me a little bit about the spring selection and I guess the weight carrying capabilities. So like you're saying, it's not it's not the biggest loader, but we know we're developing accessories for the front. We've got bull bar and winch on it now, so we know it's going to get that change in in accessories there. So I've got a couple of options to help us achieve our target ride height. The rear with the, the little payload it has, at this stage we're getting away with one spring, with two springs in the front and a, a trim packer to cover bar and winch fitment and different preferences I suppose for ride height where we've, we've got two springs in the front. So Foxy, one of the things that I hear the engineers talking about is shock tuning, okay? So you yeah. guys do quite a bit of that shock tuning work. Tell me what's what's that about? What what's involved? There's probably a couple of aspects to shock tuning and, and developing specifications, shock specifications to what we want. So it's it's not just the performance, but it's also the lengths and the mounts and all that sort of stuff. We can work out our target ride height. We hand build a shock to that extended length we want, giving us the right amount of travel, and then we set about valving a shock. So the valving a shock is changing the shims on the inside that make it softer or harder. At slow speeds, at mid-range speeds, little bumps, slightly bigger bumps, and then higher speeds for the big bumps, you know, up until the point that you sort of get a bit airborne or some bigger speed humps that you hit a bit too fast to sort of a high speed, different areas of the shock that we can tune. So our, our job is to match that to the springs. So we build it in the lab, run it on the dyno, check what the performance is like, is it what we expect? fit it to the car in the workshop and go out and drive it. Drive it on roads like this, see what its dynamic performance is like, how it handles, how comfortable it is. It's one of those things that you creep up on as well. It's, it's a matter of almost a process of elimination. You set the window fairly wide to start with. The best way to do it is start off soft and not go drive like an idiot, knowing that it's going to be soft and it's not going to have as much control as you, as you want ultimately. And then creep up on, on introducing more control while maintaining comfort. and. Once you think you've got it, you know, got it where you want it, you push it a little bit further and tighten it up a little bit more and tighten it up a little bit more until you get to the point that it's it's too tight and it's uncomfortable um, or it's not handling the terrain the way you want it, and then you back it off a little bit. So it is a process that we know is not we're not going to get right first time. And, and if we did get it in one shot, then then I'd say we haven't done our job thoroughly enough. Could we? have put more control into it, could we have made it more comfortable? So that's, it's not a five minute job, but it's, that's the part of the job that I find and the other guys find most satisfying is, is that iterative process of, of refinement and refining the car. And it's, it's really satisfying to be able to take something and get tangible improvements every day. And, oh, and that's I can the imagine, best part of our job. And I can imagine you'd be very satisfied with this one because the, way, really, the, the, yeah. the, the handling that, that that balance between control and comfort is 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 amazing in a in a car that's so small like this. I think you've done a fantastic job.